Sweden and Finland moving a step closer to joining NATO. Today, 30 members of the alliance signed off on the accession protocols for the two countries. The move sends the NATO membership bids to, to the alliance capitals for legislative approvals. Experts say it's a process that could really take months. Today, the Secretary General of NATO spoke to reporters in Brussels. He said the historic move is a major blow to Vladimir Putin. Uh, President Putin tried to close NATO's door. We uh, now demonstrate that NATO's door remains open. Those remarks come as Ukraine lost one of its last strongholds in the eastern Donbass region. The Kremlin reports Russian forces took control of the of Luhansk province over the weekend. Russian troops pushing to take over the rest of eastern Ukraine as the battle for the region enters a new phase. International coverage now from our sister network Sky News and their reporter Alex Crawford on the ground in the Donbass. They know the rest of the Donbass is next on the Russian target list. We're the first British journalists to get a look at the foreign supplied heavy artillery they hope will turn the war for them. And they remain optimistic, despite their recent losses, with this message to the Russians. It's not for long, the commander says. We'll kick you out and get it all back. The loss of one half of the Donbass is tough, but they're not giving up. They can't. This heavy artillery system is highly accurate and highly mobile. They've been provided to Ukraine by multiple countries. This one's a Caesar and it comes from France. But they are still heavily outnumbered and outgunned by Russian stocks. And that's why they're crying out for many more. The Russians are already pushing deeper into eastern Ukraine. This is the Ukrainians' most effective way of fighting back. The Donbass battlefield has seen the most intense fighting of the year so far since the Russian leader unilaterally declared the two regions independent. But Russia wants all of the Donbass, and it doesn't look like much is going to stop them. This is what a howitzer can do. Here it obliterates a Russian tank, but this modern weaponry has arrived late and maybe not in enough time to save the Donbass. We travel even closer to the Russian line and Marinka town, which has changed hands a couple of times already and where the Russians are intensifying their attacks now. Here they say the Russians are using all types of artillery, all types of missile. And we were shown parts of what the police say were air bombs used for firing phosphorus. Phosphorus again. The Russian tactics are terrifyingly familiar. Hit, destroy, then advance. We're trying to keep to the tree line because they're pretty convinced that there are a lot of saboteurs, Russian saboteurs operating in this area who are acting as spotters for the attacks and the attacks have been pretty extensive. So again, the residents have gone underground. There are more than 20 people living in this one, old people and mothers with teenagers. How much longer do you think you can carry on like this? As long as possible, she says. We're afraid to go back home because there's nowhere to hide there. The fighting has left schools shattered, and there seems to be a deliberate low targeting here right through a shelter where families were taking cover. Nothing seems off limits in this war. For the news, I'm Alex Crawford.